Hello and welcome to the 55th video in this series, Programming HS Engine in JavaScript. So in this video we're going to start the detection for the clicking on squares and pieces. And the thing to note about this design here, very ropey design, is because the piece images are the same size as the squares, if we click on a piece the square doesn't detect the click. So when we're trying to detect a user move, obviously the user moves from a square where there's a piece on it, and the two square though might be empty. So we need to be able to have the facility to detect pieces on uh, clicks on squares and on pieces. The first thing, however, we're going to do is go into defs.js and define a couple of new structures inside here. One of the structures we're going to define is going to be called a game controller, and I'm just going to save a little bit of time and drop this in. And this just has the side that the engine has been set and the side that the player has been set and whether the game is over or not. And the reason these are like this is, is if I don't want the engine ever to think, so I just want the player to enter moves, let's say, then we can set the side to colors dot both. And always then, because the engine basically, after every time a move is made, what we'll do is we'll call a function or a bit of a line of code, which will say, okay, a move has just been made is the game controller's engine side the same as the internal engine side? If it is, then start thinking. Well, if we ever want to add the functionality of the GUI where the user can just enter moves, so you could say put a checkbox which says don't move for now until I've entered a sequence of moves and then think, then you could set the side to colors dot both and the engine would then never think. And the same thing can be done for the player side when, for example, the ball, uh, the game is in a game over state or you don't want the player to be able, for whatever reason, to enter moves. You can also say here, because um, we, we'll be using something that when eventually we make moves, when the user selects a piece, we'll say it will only allow selections if the player side is equal to the current side to move in the internal engine. Okay, so long-winded explanation, but that's why we've got that there. And the game over is just to detect whether the game is in a game over state or not, so whether we want to accept moves. The next thing we'll add is something called a user move, and this contains a from and a to square, and this is simply to facilitate a little bit um, sort of my sort of bot botched uh, way of handling the input of the move from the user. The user inputs moves by a click, and if I go to the proper version here, Oh, and you'll notice by the way it's version 1.9 now because I've corrected the on bug. When the user clicks on the first square, what will happen is the program will say, okay, the user's clicked. Is the two square at a value of no square? Uh, sorry, the from square at a value of no square. If it is, then select that square for the from square. If it isn't, select that square for the two square. Then the question will be asked, are both from and to selected as squares, if yes, then try to make that move and deselect the squares. So even if the move is illegal, it just won't make it, but it'll still deselect the squares. So I've clicked there, so now if I click up here, you can see that the square deselects. So we go, we use the from and to squares in that way. So I'll just save that then, and oops. And now we'll go into uh, GUI, and we can start date.js, and we can start adding in the functionality that we need. So the first function we need is a function called click square. And I'll call it click square, funnily enough. And it's going to take in a page X. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you'll know what this is. This is simply the X and Y coordinates of the arguments when there's a click. And for now, all we're going to do is just log console.log. And we'll just log that we clicked a square and what the arguments are. So I'll just log that, click square at, and then plus page x, and we've got page y, and in the middle of there, obviously, we could do a little bit of a comma or something. Okay, so this just tells us where we've clicked our square. And now we want to add in a couple of functions, and like I said, one for actually having clicked the piece and one for having clicked a square. So we're going to use a jQuery here and the doc get the document, the whole document. And just look for whoops, sorry, it's it's on. We have to use here. Click. And then we want to specify also what class we're looking for here. So we're looking for a click on the piece class. And we have there a function then with its argument e 
and open brackets and close brackets and close bracket and semicolon before I get completely confused again as usual. I think that's that's right or have I missed something? Have I missed something? Have I missed something? Sorry, I'm just double checking. I've got everything in here. I've got an extra bracket in here. Good. Okay, so now that's done in here, I can just log to the console that we have a piece click. And what we'll do is, is we'll just call the click square argument now, just for this video, just to show that everything is working okay there. So we've got e.page x and e.page y. We'll be adding to these functions then later on. And I want to do exactly the same thing just for the square as well to check everything is working okay. So we've got dot square and square click and save. Okay, so if I just bring in the browser here now and go to our version and just refresh and now just click and bring over the console and it says I've clicked at undefined and undefined. So I need to just double check what I've done wrong in the code there. E dot page. Ah, it's a lowercase here, isn't it? Sorry about that. And let's make a space here so it's easier to see. OK, so I'll just uh, bring across the console again and then I'm going to refresh the browser again. And I'm just going to click. So I've clicked a square here. In fact, I'll just cover the browser. I'll click a second square, a piece and then a square. And it should say to us that we've got the second square, then a piece click and then a square click and the coordinates here. So those click functions are now working and in the next video we'll carry on building up these uh, selection of pieces and squares. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.